you. Uh, I'm hearing from some of you, and that is terrific. Matter of fact, this story I'm going to tell you, Charles McBride, who did a lot of things with me over the years in youth ministry, asked about this one. We had a group called Joyful Noise. And actually how Joyful Noise started is I was the regional youth minister, and we would do summer camp for each age group. And we just weren't able to get some of the kids to be able to come because of the expense. So I thought, we have some really talented people. Let's do a group uh, that can do a couple of concerts, one in Tucson, one in Phoenix, and we'll sell our tapes with camp songs because if you had a youth group and didn't have somebody who could play the guitar, you weren't able to sing at your fellowship groups. So um, my current, <laughs> my husband, Bill, his cousin, who I knew before Bill, he, she, Sandy, gave us the name, and it was called Joyful Noise. <clears throat> well, one of the times we were getting ready to do a concert in Phoenix, and we'd all gotten new shoes. And so we were wearing them so the bottoms of them would be roughed up and we wouldn't slip. And so I was wearing it, and I was walking out of the house. There was three steps down, and the phone rang. So I turned around to go back in the house to answer the phone, and I slipped on a piece of paper and went down. Of course, I tried to catch myself with my left arm and dislocated my wrist. I didn't even know you could dislocate your wrist. I had my arm up on the steps. They were metal steps. Broke two ribs and hit my head and had a concussion. Didn't know I had a concussion. I looked at my wrist, and here's this bone up over, and I'm thinking, okay, this is not good. Well, we lived in Marana. And so there was no health care facility close. The closest one was about 45 minutes away. I was home by myself. I got in the car, and I drove myself into this urgent care. I had to stop three times to get out of the car and throw up. That's when I got to thinking, I think you've got a concussion. I kept going. I went in. And, you know, in all the movies, all the westerns and everything, a cowboy falls off his horse, dislocates his shoulder. They give him a shot of whiskey pull his arm, pop it back in, he's up on the horse, he's good to go. I'm thinking, okay, this is a piece of cake. I go in, and they go, hmm, you have a dislocated wrist. Ah, yeah, I kind of figured that one. Didn't need to have a medical degree to know that. So they had to give me a shot to, to numb it, and they pulled it back into place. Then they had to wrap it, and I had to wear it in a sling. I was like, where's the shot of whiskey? <laughs> Aren't I just able to get back up on the horse and keep going? And they said, how did you get here? And I said, I drove myself. And they said, you have a concussion. I went, okay, that isn't good, is it? And they said, no, you cannot drive. So I was going to have to call somebody, which I did. Well, that weekend, we were doing a concert. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? I mean, I really hurt. And... I just thought, we're still going to do this. We need to raise this money. And so Sandy, uh, Bill's cousin, she lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. She came and got me and drove me to Phoenix because that's where our concert was going to be. And that evening, I was getting ready to go on, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to stand here for two hours because that was how long our, our show was going to be. So they got me a stool. I sat on the stool put my hand under my sling so I could hold my ribs. Let me tell you, my breath control was not as good. I looked really rugged. And so when we were there, I told the audience, I said, I would love to be able to tell you that I got hurt by running out to save a two-year-old from imminent death from a car accident, but that would not be true. And as a pastor, i got to tell you the truth. I fell up the stairs. And I broke my ribs and dislocated my wrist. So I sat there uh, on that stool for two hours and sang. Let me tell you what, that was the longest concert we ever did. But Joyful Noise was a wonderful group. We sang together for about eight years. Charles McBride, John Fortemalt, Jane Terrell, uh, Lainey played the double bass. Shauna, my daughter, played the piano the synthesizer. And Connie Kiesel played the piano. I mean, we just had a marvelous, marvelous time. 
And I think back to that time and realize it was incredible. And we didn't realize we were going to catch on, and that's why we sang all over Southern California, all over Arizona, New Mexico, traveled to Iowa. I mean, we just traveled wherever anybody asked us, and we were able to raise enough money to create a youth endowment fund for the Christian Church for the state of Arizona and allow kids who wouldn't have been able to go to camp or go to retreats be able to have the funding that they could. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. As we keep going with these stories, I'll tell you a few more about Joyful Noise and some of those fun times that we had and some of the incredible things that you'd, we just, I look back now and shake my head. Uh, the story I want to share with you this morning is from a book that I realized that I've had for 35 years, and it's called God is Everywhere. And it's a Hallmark book. And a lot of these quotes or poems aren't accredited to anybody, but I just want to share this one with you because I thought it was just so incredible as I'm snowed in this morning, so this seemed to be a good one. Can we hear God in a robin song, in the laughter of a child at play? Can we see him in the silver symmetry of a snowflake or in a sunset? Perhaps he dwells within our souls or in the love we share with friends. Or is, as some claim... He taught us to be heard in the thundering chords of the organ on Sunday or in the patter of raindrops in April. But God cannot be found in one place, one day, or one person. God is truly in all people, all places, all creatures, all creation. We feel his presence wherever we go, in whatever we do, because God is everywhere. When I think back to some of these stories and realize how true that was in the life that the Lord blessed me with, to be able to be in the lives of so many wonderful people, all the people who performed in Joyful Noise, all the kids that we got to minister to, all those work camps, which we still have a lot more stories about the work camps, all of those things come back and touch my heart and my spirit in today's world, even all these years later. I want to thank you very much for tuning in and listening. I'm anxious to hear any of the other stories you want me to tell. We'll go on. I have more 911, more camp stories, more Miranda stories. I tell you, the Lord has richly blessed me. This is Bonnie Pegg saying, have a blessed day.